Hey, welcome on back to the channel, everybody. Inside of this cooler, we've got, well, just outdoor greatness. But what we're gonna be focusing on today is a genuine 100% certified wild Texas hog. A sow to be exact, spotted one, that one you guys saw on my video. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. We're hitting that million mark at some point. Just keep on doing it. Double subscribe, can you do that? My plan was to get with Cosmos Q, get on one of his big uh, oak fired, big old smokers and do this thing whole. We will do that at some point with another pig, but uh, he was unavailable. Super busy right now, making them spices, sauces. He gave me some instruction. We're gonna attempt this on our smoker here at the house. I mean, the thing is whole here right now. So viewer discretion advised. I've also got a couple of crappies of catfish in here and a bunch of Coors lights. That just sounds like a good weekend to me. We're gonna attempt to cut it up. So got a little fur on his face. Come here, old son. Oh, all righty. This is a uh, beautiful, clean looking pig. This thing was hanging in a walk-in refrigerator for a week and a half, and then it's been on ice for a few days. This is one of the, the few pigs that I've like skinned the whole thing. Uh, normally in this process, you would leave the skin on for smoking a whole entire pig. So I think I'm gonna do that on, on the next one. Uh, and I had to figure out how to get the hair off. If you know how to do that, let me know in the comments down below. But I've never done this before. I've never done it before. Wild pigs can either taste like absolute trash or they can taste pretty good depending on their diet and whatnot. They are a lot different than normal farm raised pigs because they have a lot less fat. Can't even get bacon off these things because they're constantly running, moving around. Enough talking. Let's break out the blade and uh, we'll start taking off the shoulders and breaking this puppy down. So. I did shoot it in the shoulder. One thing interesting about wild animals like this is that they don't have any uh, like sockets in their in their shoulders. It's very strange. Okay, there we go. There's uh, front shoulders. Now for the hams. Uh, this is basically going to be like your, you know, holiday ham. Cut around the tendies here. I'm trying to cut around the socket. I must have gotten lucky. Hit it right on that perfect spot of the joint. Okay, there's your holiday ham. Nice, thick, and juicy. Now we got our tenderloins in here. Just go ahead and remove these. The tenderloins I've always found are the easiest thing to take out of the animal because they basically just pull out. It's such, I mean literally just so tender and after aging it, it's like it, cut, it comes off the bone just that much easier. Like this, this animal is breaking down easier than any one I've ever had and this is the longest I've, I've aged age one pork tendies so all that's left here is the the back strap and the ribs and we got it broken down i spared the ribs <laughs> get it spared there just wasn't much meat on there and that should be enough to fill up our little camp chef here maybe 220 maybe somewhere in between maybe we go 215 and because this is electronic it needs to be plugged in it's not plugged in, so I gotta grab an extension cord. Apologize. Okay, now let's plug her in. Really low. We're gonna go 205. Confirm. Wah bam. She's gonna start going. While this is gonna get ready, usually takes about 10 minutes or so. I'm gonna go inside and we're gonna get it covered up. That is a big old pork pot right there, ladies and gentlemen. It looks pretty good. I'm happy with, with the way that turned out. This meat just looks really nice, aged really well. So we're gonna go with that Cosmo SPG. I got this stuff at, at Bucky's. This is where I pick it up. But we're gonna go the Honey Killer Bee, which is kind of a sugary, sweet 
Uh, it's got a little spice in it and just your standard salt, pepper, garlic. Mustard could be an option. You can throw the throw a mustard coating on this just to let it stick, but uh, honestly, that that uh, the Honey Killer Bee already has some sugar in it. Kind of sticks pretty good, so I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna cover these up, just douse them in the sink with all this stuff, and yeah, then we're gonna throw them on there. That's, that's basically it. Very simple. This is one of those times where you do, you know you have like the two sides of this thing. You have like the little small holes, and then you just have the big hole. It's a big hole now today. Smothered, covered. I usually go light on the salt, pepper, garlic though. It's very strong, so we'll go with the whole side. It's covered. Just gonna pat these areas. Pat that pan butt. Oh, looking pretty tasty right there. I used about a third of the bottle on that Honey Killer Bee. Um, we are at 233 right now. It's supposed to be at 205. We're, we're kind of we're getting it we're getting it locked in, adjusted. Woo -wee. Okay, I'm gonna take the hams. I'm gonna put those on the lower back part. Oh gosh, I almost lost the whole thing. Shoulders, same thing. Those are going on the lower, putting the back straps along with the tenderloins on top. Close her down and we'll set our probe. This piggy's all set to go, y'all. So I bumped my temperature up to 220 on the smoker and the probe temp to 200. So once it gets to 200, we are done. Uh, I'm gonna come out here just take a little meat probe on the tenderloins and everything like that. See where they're at before I uh, go to bed. This is normally a very long process. It normally takes anywhere from like 12 to 15 hours on a general size pork shoulder or pork butt that you get. We're gonna keep an eye on it. Hopefully it, it tastes amazing. I'm always curious about wild game and aging the meat and I'm really excited about this. And normally with pigs in Texas, I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like normally if it's, especially if it's a big one, like a boar, it's just going into the woods for coyote food. But I felt like this one was a good size, it was a good looking sow, uh, and you know, before it gets too big and gnarly, and gets a lot of worms, tapeworms, grubs and stuff in it, I know it's just disgusting, but a lot of wild game has that kind of stuff. We're just gonna make sure it's safe, we're gonna cook it all the way through, beyond all the way through, really break down the meat, and hopefully it turns out awesome, y'all. So, wild, wild pigs! On the smoker, first time ever for me. Let's see how we do. It has been about three hours. So we're gonna go ahead and check on the tendies and the back straps. Uh, and I've already actually done a little bit of juice work on the rest of the stuff. They, they were starting to get dry. The skin was starting to get a little, a little crackly. Let me just bring you into my little experimentation over here. So it makes me up a little apple cider vinegar, some olive oil, and a little bit of water. And I'm throwing that on with the brush on these beautiful tasties right here. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. A little bit of that. Just keep that skin juicy. And I think these, uh, these tendies and the back straps are about, about done. Since this is wild pork, I'm gonna say it's probably needs to be above what I would normally cook regular meat at. It's 141, so I'm gonna say at least 165, at least 178. So this is gonna be our this is gonna be our taste for now. Time for the first taste. Smoked wild pig tendies. Mm-hmm. See what we're dealing with? That's looking pretty tasty. Still hot, still really hot. Extremely tender. Wow. Zero gaminess. Oh my gosh. Y'all, that is bomb. That is bomb right there. That is the best wild pig I've ever had. Now, 
This is overcooked a little bit. Uh, you know, the skin is has got a little crunch to it. Just smoking it that way. Oh my gosh, and it, just being aged and the meat is just breaking apart. Flavor's fantastic. I've had four or five wild pigs in the past. I've never really liked any of them. This one is done right. I've been a, a skeptic of wild pig meat just because I've killed a lot of big ones. I mean, they're eating things out of the ground. Wild pigs, they, they literally just eat anything. They're kind of gross. Um, so that's why I was saying like with their diet, it kind of depends on the taste, but I'm telling you guys, the way I aged this one, the meat breaking down, the tenderloins are spectacular. I cannot wait to try uh, the hams and the shoulders. I feel like if everyone aged their meat like this and cooked it like this, there'd be a lot more wild pigs going down in the great state of Texas. Now we went on the straps and then we're gonna have ourselves some pork butt, which is actually the shoulder of a pig. Little known fact, commonly known fact, but I didn't know that until three weeks ago. Okay, the straps should be done now. Just checked them, they are at uh, 163. Woo! Yes, sir. And our internal probe on the shoulder is 156 right now. We're gonna keep that going for another few hours. So let's take a, let's take a bite out of the straps and see how good they are. The straps look even better. They also have a little fat on them. So that should give them some more flavor. Center cut white in the center, yes. Sir, I think this is gonna be fantabulous. Look at the white meat center. A little bit of fat layer, let's see what we got working here. There's not one iota of gaminess. Oh my gosh. Extremely tender. Oh my gosh. This would be so good to just slice up. I mean, it's great by itself, but if you wanted to slice this up and put it like a nice sweet sauce with it, like an orange sauce with some noodles. I mean, when I start making weird noises, I know it's good. I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, hype this up y'all. I was honestly expecting it to, to not even be that wonderful. I'm thinking, yeah, we should save this. We should slice this up and do some sort of like Asian dish with it this week. I think we can get OSG to eat that. I mean, that is, that's fantastic. So there's only one thing left now and that's, uh, that's the shoulders. So we're going to see what the ham and shoulders taste like, but if this is any indication. Uh, I think we're in for a nice treat. I'll just say I did not even expect the pig to be cooking this long. I thought this, th this thing was gonna be ready like middle of the night. I was gonna have to, to pull it off. So last night when I was going to bed, uh, I, dozed, I dozed off and then I checked my, my app and my temperature for inside of the smoker was like 90 degrees. I was like, what is going on? And I got a notification saying the flame had, had gone out, make sure to clean it and all this. And I'm like, oh no, oh no. I don't want to have to be doing that. I got my daggum fish mitt. I got my, I got my towel. I'm in there like digging around and stuff. I'm taking probes out. I'm taking the grill rates out. I'm getting down there. I'm scraping, doing all this stuff. I'm firing the deal up. And I think I get it going again. I go back inside, fall asleep. And then next thing I know, I'm like, bleh, wake up one in the morning, daggum grill's like 70 degrees, the thing never even fired up. So we had some mishaps. Turns out, you just gotta add more pellets. I finally figured that out at like two in the morning. So we had, we had some errors. We had some uh, smoking errors on my part. I apologize. While all that was going on out here, I kept hearing these noises walking around. And in the leaves, I'm like, what, what, what is going on out here? Is a bobcat trying to get to the chickens? What is going on? I race downstairs. I break out my new favorite toy in the whole daggum world. The best pig peepers I've ever seen in my life. Thermal binoculars right here by Pulsar. There's deer. There's deer just walking around out here. There's 
armadillos, possums, and it's so quiet. And I'm like, I'm trying to be quiet because the deer are trying to bed down and go to sleep. And all I want to do is go to sleep. I'm trying to be quiet and be respectful to the rest of the creatures. And I'm being loud. And I dropped a couple things. I, anyways, the point is we're still smoking this thing. And I think it's drying out. So we're going to take a look at it. Uh, I, I, at this point, I think I should cover it. Drop me a smoke, some smoking advice down below. Ooh, they look crusty. Y'all, they look crusty. They're almost at 180 right now, internal. Uh, I don't know what, how much the foil is gonna do, really. I really don't know, so. I might just leave them like this, and there's gonna be some crust. Just give it a little cover, I'll try to help. We are here, everybody, it is time. We are almost to 200. I mean, we're, we're pretty much there. Uh, for my research, 195 is good. To start breaking down pork, 200, even better, 205. LFD goes 205, that's what he told me. Um, but this, this has been a literally now over a 12 hour uh, process, it's like actually 16 hours. The next step, which is put them in tin foil and let it rest uh, for probably, probably 30 minutes. This thing went through a ton of pellets. Uh, went through probably half a bag. Half, half of one of those big bags. So. That looks pretty done to me. Big sucker. In the kitchen. For the worst cheese. <laughs> Are you committing to a pork taste this afternoon for lunch? Uh, basically. 18 hours later. You know what? I will only because you spent so much time on this. Thank you. <laughs> I feel Thank like it so would much. almost be rude to put my selfish needs in front of your hard labor works. That is a good wife right there. If your man is out there smoking meats for over half a day, it's worth a taste. Hours. <laughs> let them cool down, let the juices come back up, and then it's gonna be time. Maybe make a sandwich, you know? Yeah. Like a pulled pork. Oh, are you gonna pull it? We could pull it. I mean, we can. There's options here. So OSU was a little concerned because of the uh, the temperatures of the meat and trichinella. I mean, she's a dietitian, so she knows about all the diseases. Uh, you know, 140 something degrees will uh, supposedly kill that off, but I think the USDA recommends 165. We're at nearly 200, so there's there's not going to be any surviving organisms in there. Uh, if there are, my hat's off to them. They're strong. OSG, you ready to get your flavor on? Your taste bud palettes, get them ready. I want you to be raw and real with me on this one, okay? I'll be, I'll be pretty raw and real. It is time. This has been resting for nearly an hour. 20 hours of your dear hubby out there slaving. Most of the time it was just me walking away from the thing and talking to the camera. There was a point in time where I had to had to nurture it. My dear, so I want you to do the revealing. I'm gonna film. Emmy, you just, uh, you help us out with lights. Give us give us some lights. I think you're always shining that flashlight. Oh, you wanna get the flashlight and show? Yeah, you wanna get the flashlight and help us out? A little lighting on the set? Oh, yep. Let me put this snowman this, down. Put this one down here. There we go. Happy you get, you the, get flashlight. the flashlight. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Light Help show. us out. Lighting on the set. It smells good already. I will give you that. Let's get a little Ooh. visual appeal. Thank you, Emmy, for a little uh, lighting <laughs> display. Um, what do you think about that? Wow, that's that's some genuine hog legs right there. <laughs> I mean, just look at those nubs. <laughs> They're so, yeah, they are nubs. This isn't a huge, huge pig, but uh, why don't we throw one on the cutting board and let's, let's check the tenderness. Okay. Let's check the juiciness and let's just, we're going to check out that flavor. It's like something you'd get at the fair. I know. Right? <laughs> Big old hog leg. I think maybe just take a fork. A fork? Is it, does it feel real crusty or do you feel like you can maybe pull it like with your tongs? It's a well, little, a little crusty. I don't know. It, it does feel that tender. I mean, look at that. It's pulling apart. Yeah. 
It's pulling apart nicely. Ooh, it does smell pretty good, y'all. Ooh, ooh she's going in for a bite right now. Mm. You know, I feel like the edge piece might be a little... You want me to get in there? Uh, yeah, yeah. Get, get, get in there. What you think is the best bite. <laughs> I don't know how I to get in there. I want your general reactions. Okay, okay. I'm still a little nervous to try this. Now, this is well cooked, my dear. That looks like a good piece. It does. This looks, oh, that looks like a good, juicy piece. I hear our daughter in the background getting tape. Okay, ready? I'm ready. I'm nervous. <laughs> That's pretty good. Is it good? That is good. Can you taste any gaminess? No, not at all. Not at all? Not tender? At all. Very tender. Very... Very soft, very tender. How's the flavors? How'd we do? It's, can you taste any flavors? Is it kind of cooked out? It's kind of cooked out, but it's not like it's flavorless, if that makes any sense. Okay, good. It tastes very... Um, I mean, this is going to be less fatty than yeah. it, you know. So it might be a little drier. Like, I, I don't taste the seasonings, if that's what you're asking, but it's a good, it's a good flavor. And you can get in there with some forks and knock that out. She's going in for a second bite. That's good. Okay, we might have something here, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. We might have something here. And I'm not a wild hog person. You told me, <laughs> don't you bring home one of them hogs. I don't want one of those. I know you're out there at night trying to get them hogs. I don't want it. That's pretty good. Okay, we have approval. Okay. So let me get a, let me give me a chunk. Sad thing is I don't know if there's a ton of meat. Well. I think we have, I mean, for one. a, that pig was probably 50 pounds. For me and Phil dress. It's a pretty good amount. Okay, that's a small piece. Oh, super tender. Mm hmm. But not a whole lot of like seasonings, but it tastes good. That's the front shoulder, too. Okay, y'all, verdict. After 20 hours and 30 minutes of this process, actually, if you count in all the aging time that went into this, quite a bit. I would have to say my perception on eating wild hogs like that has changed. I have a new appreciation, at least for picking out a small sow in this case. If we're just apples to apples here, the boars and the bigger pigs are probably gonna taste a little gamier, and I've definitely had some greasy gamey pigs uh, in my day, but that right there, zero gaminess. It wasn't greasy, there wasn't anything off-putting about it at all. Obviously, I had the ability to hang it, which is awesome that helps but you could put it in a cooler if you really wanted to you could put it in a cooler for like a big 110 or something for an extended period of time and probably get really similar results so this is definitely not going to be the last time that i go harvest a small pig i'm definitely going to be hunting for bigger boars and and big sows and things like that to control the population where I deer hunt because they are so invasive and almost impossible to get rid of. Every once in a while, I'll be taking one of those little perfect ones. I'd really like to see how it does on like a 16, 20 hour smoke with the whole entire thing. Uh, it might just make it even that much better. So y'all, I surprised myself in this video. It's my first time ever doing this. Even with the mishap I had in the middle of the night, it still turned out really good. So if you live in any of these states that have a bunch of hogs and you're just getting rid of them because they're pests and varmints or whatever, pick you out a nice little juicy one and put some smoke on it, you might be surprised. So thank you guys for tuning in today. I uh, hope we all learned something together. Don't forget to subscribe so we can reach that million subscriber mark, big goal. Uh, for myself, so please go ahead and do that. Uh, like it and share it if uh, you got a buddy that shoots a lot of pigs and has never smoked one. You know, might change his mind or her mind, whoever's out there slaying hogs. So thank you very much. God bless y'all. I'll see you on the next one.